kids, Kelly of Kelbell Studio here with another year of paper couture. We're going to continue the series with paper corsets this year. And I'm a little late with Miss August because it's already September and I'm just now getting August done. Yeah, whatever. Get over it, right? Um, that might happen from time to time, but anyway, we're going to make this divine little confection, which I know you're going to love because you're actually going to get this pattern paper to use for your own if you like this, which I know you do. You love it, right? It's yummy. Okay, so we'll get started and I'll tell you all about what we're going to be doing. The first thing I'm going to do is give you the scoop on how the Corset Diary videos are going to work. You're going to get a journal page that looks something like this. I've even rounded the corners to give you kind of a guide as to where to cut. You can choose to cut this out however you want. I'm going to use some decorative scissors. And I happen to have these Deckle Edge scissors by Fiskars. And the, the page size is the actual size of the cover, so you are going to want to cut these down a little bit. You can cut it the reason I had you edge is because the edging will take off just enough that you can fit it in that cover. So don't worry if you cut off all of the distress part and go back in and redo that. So once you've got it cut out, you're just going to fold it in half. So you're going to have blank pages on either side, or you could fold it the other way and have your notes here. And obviously you're going to have, this is going to be blank. So either way, however you want to do it. And I just left some notes here so that maybe you can write down some uh, notes as you're watching the video, or just basic notes to help jog your memory, or things that you've learned about putting this corset together. So that's what the note thing is. And if you have a little corner edger, I don't think this is, has much to clip, but certainly welcome to edge that a little bit. Get a little more rounded edge. And then I'm just going to go around and distress, give it a little more distressing. My distressing isn't very dark. I have darkened it up in your copy as well as darkened up this rose a little bit. So look forward to that. So I'm just going to use a little bit of distress ink and a paper towel. And just go around and give these edges a little more of a distressed look. So it doesn't have to be perfect, you know, kind of getting the stuff everywhere, but that's okay. This is art. It can be however you want it to be. So I've got my page done, and I did a little distressing on the insides too, as well, well as smearing a little bit just on the page itself. And these pages are going to be good for holding things like library cards, you know, which you can glue on to these flaps, or you can even do it this way and put pretty ribbons hanging out, but we will get to stuff like that a little bit later. So for now, we're just doing the corset, so the template obviously fits on here, so you can keep all of your templates together in one book, and this will be really fun. So I think you'll really like it. I have become what is commonly known as a bit of a Pinterest addict, and I found this paper from a gal who makes these free and available for you to use, so I am putting a link to this paper pack in with the blog post where you find the template and the video and yada yada, but I thought you might enjoy using the same paper as me if you so choose. I made the pattern a little bit smaller and I've also 
made it a little pinker for my use, so feel free to alter it as you need it for your use. So how I normally start my projects is I just separate the pieces out like this. And my ways of putting this together are going to be either similar or the same in every video I do. So I'm only going to do one video. This will be the basic video on how to cut out your pieces and glue them together. And you won't see me do this in any subsequent video unless there's something that I do differently. And then you obviously will see that, but do not expect to see the same stuff in every video over and over and over again. So I'm going to refer you back to this first one if you need help learning how to cut and glue your, your pieces. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your paper and you're going to figure out where you want to position this. And right now we're doing the inside, so it's probably not going to matter. And feel free to use a solid color on your inside if that's something that you so desire to do. I'm just going to use the same paper for the inside and the outside. So I'm good at cutting these out without needing to tape them down first. So. I use an X-Acto knife. You're welcome to use scissors. I use the X-Acto knife because I feel like I have a little more control over that and I can get the edges a little better. probably easier to cut that little tick mark to come at it from the other direction. Would have been a lot easier and that wouldn't have that little piece wouldn't have come up. So I'm just holding it down and moving it around slowly. And these can slip and that has happened to me before and it's uh, it can get kind of frustrating. And you want to go slowly and carefully so that the paper doesn't start curling up. My Here's my back piece and basically this is the inside of the back piece. So I'm going to cut out my front piece the same way and I'll be back. So once I've got my two pieces cut out, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some glue on the back of this piece, the white part, whatever part is not your patterned paper. And I'm using the decoupage gel because it's easier to cover large surfaces. So what you want to do is just be careful that you don't get it up underneath. If you have an inkjet printer like I do, you could get smears up under there which is kind of a drag to have to reprint these again. So, just going to quickly but carefully put my decoupage gel on here. I don't want this sliding around like that. And it looks like I did good. So, set this aside for a minute. And then here's my piece of paper. And I'm just going to position it with enough room that I can add some stuff to the sides. Some cut I'm going to leave some cutting room on the sides. So it's going to look like this onto the back side of my pattern paper. So I have this kind of thing going on. And how I'm going to cut this out is the parts that are going to be open, like this part here and your bottom part at the bottom, can just be cut by following along your outline very carefully because 
I'm using such a light paper that I can almost barely see the outline of this. And then I'm going to bring it out beyond this. And I'm going to follow the curve of it. You know, it doesn't have to be perfect. You just want enough paper that you can... Well, you'll see what we'll do with it, but... Always get out of the camera's eye. I'm just going to leave enough paper that you can work with. So you'll be left with something that looks like this. So you've got your little white pieces like this, and we're going to make cuts. So just little square cuts or straight cuts. So I'm just going back in at an angle and cutting right where my original cut was. And I try not to go all the way to this seam. I try to leave just a hair, just a scotchy smidge of a hair. And I'll do the same thing with the other so side. This just makes it easier for us to flip these tabs around the contour of that curve. Clipping the curve, that's what it is. You're clipping your curve. Ooh, there's one I forgot. Oops. So then you have it that looks like this because what we're going to do is take the inside of this. You want the inside paper facing the inside of your front corset piece and you're going to line them up as best you can. Well, they should match perfectly if you cut them correctly. They should match perfectly. And these tabs are going to fold over. But, here's the tricky part about this. We have a back piece that comes down lower than our front piece. So when we flip it over and glue it onto our decorative paper, we're not going to be able to cut that, that low cut part. So what we have to do, and also same with this bottom piece, comes up higher. So there is a workaround. Of course there is, right? There's always a workaround. It's a little tricky, but it's doable. So what you want to do is you're going to flip this piece over so it's hard to see. Well, you're not flipping it over to make it hard to see. I'm, I have this flipped over onto the white paper and this is probably un, totally unnecessary for me to explain this. Can't see it because it's white against white. Yeah, wowie. That was necessary in life, wasn't it? Anyway, so how we're going to do this is you're going to carefully cut, and if you want to make that easier to see, you can take just a, let me just mark it up, take a pencil and follow along that outside edge and also this bottom edge. I just moved that. Line it up again. Make sure I get that corner. There. So we have this piece with a light pencil mark. And then what I'm just going to do is maybe I need a ruler. I want that nice corner piece because this is very. It's very tight up in here, so you want to get as close to that corner piece as you can. So I'll go ahead and make this cut. And I'm going to go just a little bit beyond that line. And then I'm just going to come down just so I know where that edge is. I can distinguish it rather than coming with a big arc. If it's a, an arc, it's going to be a little bit tougher to tell where your edge should be. Here, you've got this definite, you know, angle. 
and you know where that edge should line up. This is just going to help you with alignment. And so the same thing over here, you'll just come down like that. And we won't cut out the sides because what happens when you start gluing paper together is it ends up getting a little bit thicker. So if you cut this using this piece at the sides, you cut it out and then try to glue it on top, it's not going to fit so nicely. So we're going to leave the, the waist open. And we'll go ahead and cut this bottom piece. It doesn't look like anything right now. But we basically we've got our two guide points. We've got where the tops are going to line up and where the bottom <clears throat> is going to line up. So I'm just using Aileen's clear tacky glue and I go back and forth between Sobo and the clear glue and the white glue and blah 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 blah. As long as it dries clear I really don't care. You know, it's what's available at the time that you happen to be at the craft store buying glue. So once we line these up. Oh, and in case you've never used one of these, I just happened to start using, this is a quilling tool, it's a needle tool basically, and I started using it for gluing my pieces. I don't know why, it just was one of those things that just seemed like a natural thing to start doing and it works out a lot better than trying to use my fingers or paint brushes then I'm going to spread glue on my tabs and just fold them over and with this one I can already see that it's coming up past this line so I'm gonna need to cut that just a little more before I glue this otherwise you're gonna have a disaster. Okay, I've got my stuff lined up pretty well and the tabs are going so that they don't interfere with this curve mark. So I'm just going to start gluing, and you might just have to glue a few at a time. And fold them over. This should be a fairly easy part to do. So it looks like that. Just do the same thing with the other side. Now we have something that looks like this, and we're ready to fit this piece onto the back of it, so we need to put glue on it before it will actually stick, of course, but I just want to see how this is fitting. You know, do I need to cut it out again, which sometimes I do. No, it looks like it's going to fit pretty well. So. It's going to work out really nicely. So I'm not going to use the decoupage gel on this for obvious reasons, you know, it could get very messy, you know, it's going to get tricky enough not managing to keep it from, you know, these pieces down here. So still just going to get a little more of my glue on here. So I'm going to get another scrap piece of paper because it's going to, I'm going to need a little bit of precision here. So I think that's going to work. I'm just going to flip this over. And then I'm just going to let it dry for a bit, because what happens when you try and cut these sides sometimes with wet glue is it can rip. So I've let this set and I'm ready to cut it. So I think I'm going to go this side first. And I'm just going to follow the contour of this carefully around. I don't want to get too close to that because I don't want to end up slicing my paper. And so that's what you have. And if you need to do a little additional trimming, feel free. And then I can open this up. And I've got some, I 
if you can see this, some trimming to do, you can see that. Got some trimming to do, which I'm just going to do with my scissors. I'm not going to try and get in there with an X-Acto knife because I don't think it will... I think it will be uglier to try doing it that way, so trim is needed. And this still isn't enormously dry, so I need to let it dry a little bit longer. And one of the things about this is if you're going to go at this with wet glue, then you better have a sharp X-Acto knife because a dull blade makes for a wreck of paper art. So once your piece is dry, then you can take a bone folder and separate it out, give it a little dimension, round out those edges a little bit. Now you're ready to embellish it. And how I have decided to embellish mine is I like taking just little bits of paper and making a little ruffle. So I can put a ruffle around this bottom edge just by pleating your paper. It's very easy to do, just a thin strip of paper and you can do it in your hand, just like this. And then when you get down to that corner, you're going to want to round it out, so you know, maybe twist it up so that it goes, comes back up, and you can continue. But this would be glued around this edge, something like this. So I think I'm going to go ahead and do that first before I show you the other thing that I want to do to this. So, just give it a little ruffle. Okay, so I have my uh, ruffle on here now, and what I did was I edited it with some scallop edge scissors. It's a nice way to make a pretty sort of ruffly finish at the bottom, you know? And this is how it looks in the back. Very flirty and feminine. Pretty. So then the other thing I wanted to do is I've got this nice lacy border punch and it makes something like this. So this is what the lace looks like a little bit closer up and then I can make this look a little lacier. by adding this little lace treatment around here. Kind of like that. So, looks a lot lacier. So I'm going to go ahead and put that around the uh, edge of this. So once I've got my ruffled lace on, it looks something like this. Well, it doesn't look something like this. It looks exactly like this. <laughs> so, the final thing I want to do to finish that edge a little more is to take some eighth of an inch satin ribbon and just run it right along that edge. And then when you get to this little dip, you're just going to flip it up. Like that. And once I've got my ribbon on, it looks it's looking pretty good. It's looking almost done. Now we want to do something up here at this edge, so I'm not going to put the ruffle on, but I, I am going to do something. Here's a little piece right here. So do something similar with this top part that we did with the bottom part. Maybe it comes down a little bit lower. This is looking rather ornate. But, you know, maybe something like this. So, 
just to edge the top part of it too. Okay, I've added a little ruffle at the top and I went a different way than how I did the bottom because the bottom's pretty fancy as it is and when I tried to put this lacy edging up at the top, I didn't really like it as much. So I took the same paper that I used for the lace edging down here and I edged it with my scalloped edge scissors just like I did with this ruffle at the bottom and then I pleated it or ruffled it and then just glued it to the top and the bottom it lays the opposite direction. So we can go at this point we're ready to embellish it and we can go one of two ways. The dotted line on this template is so that you can lay this over and snip it right up the center. Now you would want to maybe not uh, and I didn't think about this because I had planned on cutting this up the center I just didn't do it before I embellished it so note to keep in mind is to think about whether or not you're gonna cut it up the center and make little lace-ups with some needle and thread I think at this point I'm gonna leave this as is and I'll do the lace up on a future corset. You know, we've got a year's worth of these, so plenty of time, right? Yeah, I think so. So this still needs some edging here. And how I plan to do that is with some stickles. Oh, one of the things I should mention is with the ribbon, this stuff is great. It's like hot glue in a bottle. So it's called Fabri-Tac and I use that for my ribbons and my heavier embellishments. So here to finish off that edge, I'm going to use some Stardust stickles. And I'm just gonna go around this edge. This is one of the things I do to hide edges and it's fairly effective. So just something like that. And then I'll go around the, well, I'll still go around the back side because we might need a little bit on the top there. And here's how this looks with all of the glittery accents on it. it looks really good. It looks very nice. Just something that, okay, I'm futzing. So the only thing really there is left to do is to add a little embellishment, like maybe a ribbon there. And I happen to like roses. You can find a folded rose tutorial on my blog if, you so, if you're so inclined. This isn't going to look very good until I get it glued on, but basically I must have roses. So. Basically that's how it'll look. So let me get this stuff glued on and then I can sit it up and you'll be able to see it better. And here is how our Little Mist August looks. And isn't she just sweet, sweet, sweet. I love this. Very, very pretty. I'm gonna leave you to your own devices as far as how you want to display this. We didn't put straps on this one, which I did on purpose because I wanted to put it in a box, but Again, the box is going to be up to you to figure out how you want to do. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and find the templates on my blog as normal. I'll leave a link, well, I'll leave a link in the beginning of the video. There. Now you know. So, Miss August. I think I named her Savannah, right? Yeah, I did. Anyway, see you next time. Thanks for joining me.